My goal for this video is to give you an idea of what's possible with custom CSS in a Squarespace website. I'm gonna start by giving you a couple of use cases of when you might wanna use custom CSS, and then I'm gonna take a step back and I'm gonna give you a basic overview of how CSS works, particularly in a Squarespace website. And then at the end, there's gonna be a lightning round, so. Stay tuned for that. This video is packed with information, so buckle up and let's get the heck into it. So first of all, I try not to use CSS if I can avoid it because the more this CSS file grows, the more messy and complicated it gets and the more error prone your website gets. It's always preferred to use the settings that Squarespace provides us with first. Let me give you an example of when I would use CSS in a Squarespace website. In the footer here, I wanted these elements to be left aligned in the desktop version, but I wanted them to be center aligned in the mobile version. When you're in mobile view on Squarespace, you can move elements around on the page, you can change the layout however you want, and it won't affect the desktop version of the website. However, once you go into the little settings pop up and you start messing around with the settings, anything you change there will be applied also to the desktop for the most part. With CSS, we can use media queries to change the styling based on the screen size. Okay, let me show you one more thing. For my own website, I wanted to make it a little more fun and engaging, so I wanted to add some animations to the homepage. This hover effect for all these buttons, all of this is done with custom CSS. When you're making a Squarespace website, all of the HTML and CSS is already there for you. Squarespace handles all of that. You get to use this drag and drop interface and they handle all the code for you on the back end. You definitely don't need to use custom CSS when you're building a Squarespace website. However, there are instances where we might wanna style things in a way that Squarespace doesn't allow us to, or add fun animations or hover effects. In those instances, you can either accept the limitation and move on, or you can break free of the mold that Squarespace is trying to contain you in and use custom CSS. Okay, the time has come to dive into some code. So let me, let me explain. CSS is used to style HTML. HTML is used to build websites. It's like the backbone of a website. Anytime you see these, these tags, these carrots, that's HTML. CSS is used to style HTML to make it look nicer. Otherwise, it would just look like this. Let's look at a simple example of some CSS. This is what CSS code looks like. This is a very simple example. This part right here before the curly brackets, this is called the selector, and this is what tells the browser which element you're trying to target. The part inside the curly brackets is the actual styling part, and this can be things like the color, the font weight, you can have a border style, you can specify the width of an element, like there's there's so many things that you can specify in here. But to learn CSS, you don't need to learn all the different styling options that can go in here. You just need to learn this format and how selectors work. Selectors are the trickiest part of CSS. To figure out what to put inside here, you can just Google it. Literally every time that I try to do a new style, I have to Google it because I don't remember things. Let's look at a very simple example in Squarespace to demonstrate. So we have this paragraph here. Let's say that we want to change the color of this, the text on this paragraph. Now, normally we don't need to do this. We can just change the color directly in Squarespace but I need a simple example to demonstrate, so we're just gonna go with this one. There are different places in Squarespace that you can add custom CSS. I like to just keep all of my CSS in one spot, and that is right here. So this is a paragraph, and I'm targeting it in the CSS by using its HTML element, which is P. P stands for paragraph. Let me just change the color to white, and it's not working, so I have to add important. Sometimes we have to add important in order to override Squarespace's CSS. Okay, I can explain that later. But let's say this isn't the only paragraph on the website. That's typically gonna be the case. What if I only wanna change the color of this specific paragraph? I'll need to revisit a little bit of HTML to explain. Let's look at this HTML. By the way, this is a website called CodePen. It lets you kind of play around with HTML and CSS and then see the output. It's a good tool for learning CSS and HTML too. This thing right inside the tag is the element. This is an H1 element, which is a heading, heading one. 
um, which is the biggest heading. This is a paragraph element. P stands for paragraph. This is a div element. Divs are like containers. Each element can have one unique ID and any number of classes. Classes are like labels that could be applied to multiple elements. IDs, on the other hand, should only be used once on a web page. When you're using an ID in a selector, you would use the hash um, symbol before the ID. For a class, you would, instead of using the hash symbol, you would use a period a dot before the class name. That's just a way to differentiate between IDs and classes. In this example, the pink text class is used in multiple places to make the text pink. Let's say we just wanna target this paragraph inside the div. There are many ways to target certain elements. In this example, we could just use its ID, but since this is the only paragraph inside a div, we could also use a selector that combines the two elements. This selector would target any paragraph inside a div. If you wanna learn more about this, you can Google CSS combinators. This was a super simple example and the code for your website is unfortunately not gonna be this simple. Like I said before, Squarespace writes all of the HTML code for your website. So we don't get to assign the IDs and classes that we want to all of the elements. Squarespace does that for us. We just have to find out which IDs and classes Squarespace is using. So that way we know which selectors we need to use in our CSS code. We can actually see all of this code that they are writing for you in our web browser. If you have Google Chrome, you can just right click and then click on inspect and then it'll bring up this panel here. Mine's on the side, but yours might be down below. I like to keep it on the side, just personal preference. If you're using a different web browser like Firefox or Safari, I believe they also have some version of this. So if we go to the elements tab, this is all the HTML for this web page. And then down here in the styles tab, this is all of the CSS that is styling this HTML. This developer panel, the inspector panel, is the key to adding custom CSS to your Squarespace website. One of the keys. There's actually another key, and I'll show you that coming up soon. It probably looks pretty intimidating and complicated, but worry not, I will explain it a little bit more. You can use this button right here to jump to certain elements in your website, and then down here in styles, it will only show the CSS that applies to that element. We need to find a way to target this paragraph that we want to change the color of. Easy, right? We just learned this. We'll use the unique ID for this paragraph. Let's see if Squarespace has assigned it an ID. Perfect. It has this ID right here. We can use this. We'll copy this directly from the inspector panel and then go over to the custom CSS. Instead of using the general paragraph element um, in the selector, we're gonna use the ID for this specific paragraph. Add the hash symbol, and then we're gonna paste the ID that we copied, and then voila, only this paragraph is white. So I'm gonna save this and refresh the page, and then what happened? This paragraph isn't white anymore, it's blue. If we look back in the inspector panel and we target this paragraph, we can see that there is no longer an ID here. What? So let me give you a little hint. Anytime you're looking in the inspector panel and you see an ID that starts with YUI, do not use that ID. That is not a permanent ID. That is a temporary ID that Squarespace um, assigned and it's gonna change. The ones that start with block are okay to use. Those will stay permanent as long as the element remains on the website. That's just like a little hint that I wish I had known when I first started because it's very confusing. So we can't use the ID because this paragraph does not have an ID assigned to it. And in general, the elements on your website are not gonna have a unique ID assigned directly to the element, like the paragraph element or the heading element. It's actually the parent div containers that will have the unique ID that we want to use in our CSS. The key is just finding the right one to use. We're gonna look at this P and we're gonna see the direct parent div of this P 
doesn't have an ID. The next div parent also doesn't have an ID. So we're gonna keep going. The next one has an ID here at the end and it starts with block. So we can copy this one and put it over here and make sure that the hash symbol comes before the ID. So we change that, but the color is still not white. Why? Because this selector is targeting the div parent, this right here. It's not targeting the P paragraph element. It's targeting the div element. In order to get this to work, what we wanna do is combine this unique ID that targets this specific block, combine it with the P element. So now this selector is going to target any paragraph, any P that's inside the element that has this as the ID, and that is the, the div, right? So if there were other P's inside here somewhere, they would also be white. But as it happens, there's only one P inside here. And that's usually what happens. When you're looking at your Squarespace website in the inspector panel, you're gonna see a lot of divs, like divs inside divs inside divs, divs all the way down. It looks complicated, but really it's just a series of nested div containers. And then once you get to that bottom nesting doll, it's that's where the element is itself. That's where the paragraph element or whatever it is. I really encourage you to play around with this inspector panel. Notice the patterns. Not to say you need to understand all of it, but just understanding a little bit will help you to understand the code underneath your website a little bit more. All that being said, there is another tool we can use to make this process so much faster and so much easier. It's a Chrome plugin. You can pin it to the top of your Chrome like I have. So that way it's just always sitting up here. I just press this button and it shows all of the unique IDs directly on the screen. So you don't have to go into the inspector panel and dig around and try to find the unique ID like we just did. But I wanted to show you so you understand what these are, okay? This is the paragraph that was white, right? Like I can toggle this on and off. And it's exactly the same id that we used right here this up here is the section you can sometimes you want to target just a specific section and all of the like paragraphs in that section this is the page id so if you want to target only a specific page you would use this id up here i use that a lot when i'm starting a new website for someone and they have an existing website i will typically put up a under construction page first i have to hide the header and footer on the under construction page you can also change styles directly in the inspector panel which is really good for testing out new changes that you want to make without affecting the website so i showed you how to use ids to target specific elements on your website, but you can also use classes when it makes sense. For example, when you want to target multiple elements. In this example, I have a gallery block and I wanted to target all of the images in this gallery block to add a little bit of a margin. Once I've found the correct element to target in the inspector panel, and I've also found the correct property and value that I want to use to achieve what I want, then I can copy that into the custom CSS, save it and refresh it and make sure that it still looks like I expect it to. Using custom CSS in Squarespace is a lot of trial and error. It might be kind of frustrating at first because you have to kind of do a lot of investigating and debugging and figure out like why isn't this working so if you're kind of feeling some of those you know similar emotions just know that i went through it too i'm sure a lot of people feel that it's just a matter of like sticking with it i didn't want to cover a lot of the nitty-gritty details of css in this video i wanted this video to be more of like an introduction to css and how to get it to work in squarespace that being said i wanted to give you some starting points to some things that might come up there's gonna be a lightning round of information right now i'm just gonna dump a bunch of information on you. If you want a deeper video on any of these topics, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, um, take what I'm saying and go and Google it and find another video or article or something to learn more about that particular topic if it applies to you. So lightning round, let's go. First thing, pseudo classes. Okay, so you can change the styling of an element when it's being hovered with your mouse and you do that using the hover pseudo class. There are a few other pseudo classes that you can use, but hover is the one that is by far used the most by me at least. I will just put that idea into your mind and you can run with it if you want. And I'll move on to the next thing, which is animations. You can do animations in CSS 
basic animations like the ones that I showed you like doing rotations you can have a color change you can have the scale of something change you do this using keyframes you use a keyframe block basically in your CSS you put it somewhere in your CSS and you define the animation in the keyframe and then you would also add the animation name so that is what identifies this animation because you can have multiple animations in your CSS file, which I do in my website actually. Then in your CSS, you would, like we did, we, you would find the right selector to use to target that specific element that you want to animate. And then you would add the animation name to the CSS styling for that selector. Breakpoints are used to define different screen sizes within your code. And Squarespace has only one breakpoint, which is the breakpoint is 767 pixels. Anything equal to or less than 767 pixels is considered mobile view by Squarespace. Anything above that is considered a desktop. This is one gripe that I have with Squarespace is that A, they don't let us define what that breakpoint is and b they don't let us have multiple breakpoints it's really hard to adjust your layout to work for a tablet and a big desktop monitor so we can add our own breakpoints in the code in the custom css we can't use the drag and drop editor with our other breakpoints, but we can at least add custom styling to the different breakpoints that we define. I like to keep a version history of the CSS code. The way that I do that is just by copying and pasting it into a text file. Every day that I work on the, the website, I will create a new copy and um, save it locally to my computer. So I have a folder of all the different versions of the CSS. The reason I do that is to prevent myself from accidentally oh, deleting no. everything. It's like when you're playing a video game and you do something wrong, you can always like go back to the last save. That's one reason, but another reason is if I styled something a certain way and then changed it, and then I decide later on that I wanna go back to the first way that I styled it, I can go into the version history and I can copy and paste the code so that I don't have to rewrite it again from scratch. So that's just like a few other little tidbits of information that you can run with. I know it can seem overwhelming to do CSS and Squarespace, but just trust me, the more you do it, the easier it will be. The more you practice, the more you test things out, the more you'll understand it and the more comfortable you'll become with it. Just stick with it and keep going, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions regarding CSS and Squarespace and I'll try to answer them in a future video. And um, give this video a like if you liked it. And that's the end of the video.